good morning we are going wild camping on Snowden roll the intro so whilst I'm sat in some lovely traffic on the A55 um, yeah this came about I don't know probably about a month two months ago I just got the bugs for wanting to stay out on the hills for whatever reason um i've also just caught a glance there i'm trying to ignore the fact that i look like a bullfrog or bloody harold from neighbors with the body second triple chin here or whatever it is um but yeah hopefully the weather holds out i've been checking the weather every single day and there seems to be a break there is a warning but yeah whether that happens or not we'll, 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 well you'll see so yeah um i've got 90 odd miles to kill with regards to distance so instead of you listening to me waffle on um i'll just show you some of the kit and equipment that we're going to be using over the next couple of days okay so whilst i'm driving to snowden uh, i thought i'd go through the kit and equipment that we're going to be using over the next three days okay um first of all everything that's going in is <laughs> Okay, so whilst I'm driving to Snowden, uh, I'm going to take this time to go over the kit and equipment that we're going to be carrying over the next three days. First bit of kit is the rucksack, backpack, bergen, whatever you want to call it. The one that I've chosen is the Osprey Atmos 65 AG, which is the anti-gravity system. Um, 65 litre capacity, to be honest, for the three days, a bit of overkill. Um, however, I have got the ability in the future, if there's more than just me, you know, we've got that flexibility there to add or remove kit. Uh, the first time using this, so I will be reviewing it, you know, after this little trip. Starting at the bottom, we've got the sleeping bag. Uh, the sleeping bag that I've chose to use is one that I've used for many years. The Snug Pack Softy Elite 3 system, okay. It has a comfort rating down to minus 5 and an extreme level of minus 10. Looking at the weather forecast for these next three days, we're going nowhere near those temperatures. However, if it does... We have got that uh, capacity within the sleeping bag because the last thing you want to be is cold during the night time when you're supposed to be resting, getting ready for the next following day. All right. Over at the bottom, this here, this is my ass pad. All right. Um, this is for when I just want to sit down. You know, if it is wet, I don't want to sit on the wet floor anymore. I can just get that out. If I'm on rocks, I can get that out. If I'm going to be there for a while because I've deployed the drone, then I can get that out and have a little bit more comfort. Okay. Above that, I've got the sleeping pad that I'm going to be using. So what I used to use was a roll mat. However, I've leveled up a bit. This is the X-Ped Sin Mat, okay? Um, you'll see me demonstrating building this or inflating it during the actual trip. Um, first time used it, same again. So we'll get to see what that is like. A little bit more protection from the elements because you're going to be raised off the floor and a little bit more comfort as well, okay? The tent that we've chose is the Van Gogh Banshee Pro, uh, the 200, okay, which is designed for two people. However, looking at the size of it, setting it up, one person with kit and equipment, plenty of space. Two people with kit, you're looking a little bit of a squeeze here now. So as a recommendation, if you want to take that, go up one. So if there's two of you, have a three-person tent. If there's three of you, have a four-person tent, you know, so on and so on. All right. The reason why I chose that is simple to use small and simple setup basically i'm saying that now in the comfort of my own, my own home without no elements or anything like that so you'll see the video of me actually setting that up um i upgraded the tent pegs though because the ones that come with it are a little bit cheap so yeah that's the only thing i've really, really tweaked with that above it bit of warm kit so i've got my north face jacket a couple of jumpers sets of gloves spare socks all that sort of good stuff and then waterproofs Essential, especially this time of the year. I've gone for Berghaus jacket, Berghaus trousers. You know, they're a named brand. They've been out there for many years and they do what they say, basically, uh, with regards to pride, you know, providing that sort of protection. Working over to this side, at the bottom here, we've got water purification systems. So this one is the purity bottle. I, I took this last year on Snowden, so you've probably seen this. Same again. Simple and easy to use, especially for drinking fresh water. This one is... A new addition all right so this is the soya squeeze um, and with that I have the ability to basically screw it onto any screw top and then pour the water from there whilst it filters it through the top 
Um, I'll do a demo of that obviously when we're on Snowden, but we'll get to that. Above here, towel. I'm expecting it to be wet, so I want to dry myself off. A couple of extras like mosquito nets, hand towels, first aid kit, very important bit. Uh, inside there, a couple of painkillers, plasters, bandages, toilet roll in case you get caught short. Toilet bags in case you definitely get caught short. Um, navigational aids, fab blonde, waterproof map, and obviously a compass, uh, minus the bubble, because you don't want a bubble in your compass. Just in case the clag does come in and we get a bit stuck. Lights, hand torch, head torch, both petzels, um, combi till or multifunctional like knife tool system. And then up here is food and cooking system. The cooking system that I'm going to be using is the Primus ETA stove. Uh, it's the first time I've used this. I did used to have a couple of years ago, it was a jet boil. This is very, very similar. Um, it says it can boil water in under two minutes, so we'll give that a test depending on the elements. And then what I've squeezed in at the top here is my foldable cup. So I'll be able to do, you know, teas, coffees, whatever that may be. I've tried to keep all like the cooking stuff together. So when I do come to unpack it, it's just nice, neat, simple, you know, as a modular system. The rations that I'll be using are British Army issued rations. Um, stick to what you know, you know. Uh, the menus, not that great that have been you know, that have purchased, however, you know, food is food. The calorie rating in them is ridiculous, uh, hence why I've chosen them. And then this stuff here at the top, I don't need to take, but I'm going to be taking anyway. And this is like my drone. So the drone that I've been using for the last couple of years has been DJI's Mavic Air. Um, pretty much purchased it as soon as it came out because it just ticked too many boxes. Lightweight, small, foldable, does, you know, 4K, etc. This bit here, though, was an addition because of the drone. So because I'm taking my drone, battery power, even though I have three, isn't the best, especially over three days. So that restricts me. So when I, what I've done is gone out and purchased the Smart Tree battery bank. First time using this, but what this does, it gives me the ability to charge on the go, up to five times over as well. And also it has a USB port on the side, so stuff like my phone, um, I can recharge whilst I'm you know, on the move. It's the heaviest individual item of all these items, but I think it'll be worth it, just so I've got that ability, if the weather favours, that I can get some decent shots, video footage and stuff like that. Um, where this lives, inside of this, uh, you'll see in a couple of seconds, because I'm just gonna, I'm not gonna put you through the pain of watching that, I'm just gonna speed this thing right up. <laughs> here in the lovely Snowden um, as I say I plan the perfect one only exists in a room I did plan on doing Ranger um, we're now at Clamberis purely because I couldn't get overnight parking you could pay till midnight and then that was pretty much it so drove to Clamberis it's £10 for 24 hours I'll have to top it up if we're going to do the two nights but I can do that via my phone provided I've got a signal if I can't get a signal and I can't top it up, then this is going to be 24 hours overnight. So, yeah, speak to you in a bit. About halfway now, uh, you can just see the trains changing over at the top there, if you look behind me. Look at that. I don't know if you can make it out down the valley, but considering there's a yellow weather warning, touch wood. It's not looking like it, but we're doing well. Look at that lunatic. Get for 
are gobbling it down below. Oh yeah, there's no weather warning. <laughs> Which way is north? Cracking views. Like a ghost train. I don't know whether you can see now, but Viz is getting really, really bad. Uh, summit's about 800 metres to the top. Uh, oh, it's worse, uphill or downhill, I can't tell. Getting used to the poles, though, I think. Coming down with poles is easier than going up with poles. I've that, or I've just not got the the you know, correct technique for using them or whatever it is. So, um, yeah. What I do is head down a bit, get out of the elements and then uh, try and find a decent pitch up spot. Get it set up, get nice and warm. And uh, down for the night. Let's check these out for views. You see the clag that's sort of coming down now. Three, four hundred meters, and look how clear it is down the bottom. But up there, ridiculous. Let's try to find a campsite down there. So that ridge line there. If we were doing the ranger route, we'd be on the other side of that. Uh, but because of the car park and stuff like that, you know, we're on Clan Berris. So, yeah, I'm sure other side of that, if that's where you handrail that all the way up to the top. So this is home for the night. Looking down into the valley. I've got running water next to me. Um, yeah, so I'll be able to top up and get using the soy. Got the primary stove on the go. Uh, meatballs and pasta for tea or dinner, whatever you want to call it. Uh, this is the view from my porch. A little over two minutes, but it's probably because it's got food and stuff in it, but yeah, looks good. Get some hot scarf. Check that bad boy out. Meatballs and pasta. Okay, this is uh, home for the night. The actual setup video just didn't happen because it was absolutely chucking it down. Um, so it was just a case of look, listen, pitch, done. So inside here, as I was saying before, you have literally kit plus one person to be nice and comfortable. If you had two people in there with backpacks, etc., it'd be a bit of a tight squeeze, doable. But uh, yeah, this is us in the valley tonight. Railway tracks just there. And then, if for whatever reason it does turn nasty in the middle of the night, all I've got to do is walk to just there hit the track and then do a left and follow it all the way back to the car park uh it should take me about half an hour but we'll see as you see the tops it's just miserable and grim that's the last run for tonight i think we're gonna lift back down to the bottom this is all set up now um finished having my food Topped up water and yeah, it's just a case of waiting for it to get nice and dark and sleeping bag out and get nice and toasty.
it's half past seven um really quiet last night really quiet which was weird but nice don't know what happened though but i really struggled to like settle last night and usually i could like click the fingers in my sleep i don't know whether it's because the first time doing this or what but this though that oh quite possibly one of the best pieces of kit that i've ever bought used or whatever it is it's so comfortable last night instead of it just being like a roll mat or something like that so and it kept me warm so we'll get up make some breakfast pack everything away and uh get off the hill so it so that's us all packed away uh as you can see that's where the pitch was last night uh, the leave no trace rule applied literally apart from a bit of flattened grass you won't even know that we were here um back up to the track which is just about here and then head back down to the car park Over the world. So what was our beginning is now the end point. Uh, just got to head down the way now through Clanberries back to the car park. So yeah, see you in a bit. So yesterday, coming up this bit on the way up, tell you what, talk about a cheeky warm up. The incline is ridiculous. Just stay to that. Feel the burn. Feel the burn. See, look at that. If I stick that now is plump or level. I'm gonna stay at that incline. It's gotta be the worst bit this. Can't help it, can I? Cattle grid! So this is the last little bit now up to the uh, the car park. Um, I'll try and get a shot of the car park because I think it's the only one in Clanberry so it actually does 24 hours from what I've found anyway so this is the car park next to the Snowden trading post uh, yeah let's get to my car and it's got a clamp on it 24 hours 10 pounds happy days <laughs> <laughs> 